Europe leading the way with important local coverage. You're watching WISN 12 News at 6. Why would somebody do something like this to him? Tonight, a mother's grief over her son's murder. Family telling 12 News he was found burning inside a car. The big question they have tonight. A fatal hit and run in Milwaukee. Surveillance video showing the moments before the victim was hit. Tonight, that search for the driver. And the Badgers bomb at Camp Randall. The bitter loss against an old rival. We begin here at 6 with a murder mystery tonight. Family members tonight telling 12 News a 26 year old man was found dead inside a burning car last Sunday. Police say he had been shot. 12 News' is Kendall Keyes joins us live. Kendall, loved ones tonight gathering to remember that man. That's right, Matt. Family and friends, they're all gathered here. They tell me this is the last place they were all together before they say police found 26 year old Diedrich Cross's body in a burning car early Sunday morning. Take a look at this ring doorbell footage. In that surveillance video, you can see and hear the burning car with a cross inside shot to death. Police say they made the discovery near 15th and Congress. Family Today tells me he lived about 20 minutes away from that location. Why he and his car were there remains a mystery. I spoke with his mother about losing her firstborn. I wouldn't think anybody would do him like that because he wasn't a kid. He wasn't a messy kid. You know, he was. You know, like I said, he was trying to figure out his life. He wanted more for his life. You think you saw him earlier that night with somebody? Let us know. A description of a car, what somebody was wearing, but somebody saw something. Kendall, we're he hearing and seeing those pleas for answers from the family tonight. Any word from police on arrests or any potential suspects? Matt, at last check with Milwaukee police, they don't have any suspects in custody for this. They do ask anyone with information to call them or Crime Stoppers. Kendall Keyes reporting live tonight in Milwaukee. Kendall, thank you. Tonight, Milwaukee police also looking for the driver in a fatal hit and run. This new surveillance video in tonight. You can see the man in the street overnight. One car goes past him. He is then hit by the second vehicle. We've stopped that video before the impact. This happened about 8 o'clock last night near Capitol in Teutonia. Police say the victim was a 55 year old man. Tonight, police asking anyone with information to come forward. Developing tonight, the Associated Press reporting that the Miami Dolphins has fired the doctor who cleared quarterback Tua Tungavaiola to play just days after a previous injury. Tua slammed his head on the field Thursday after a big hit. He had been cleared to play even though he hit his head during a game just four days earlier. He was checked out at a hospital, later tweeted that he's feeling better. Still unclear though when he could play again. The doctor who cleared him was a consultant, not directly affiliated with the team. Now to the Badgers, that brutal loss for the team today, overwhelmed at home by the Illini. 12 News is sports is Jared Fiel Elka joining us now. Jared, where do we begin? Yeah, that's a great question. We can talk <laughs> about everything that went right, Matt. However, I have a feeling that'd be a very short list as opposed to everything that went wrong for on Saturday for UW. How about the vaunted running game for one? The backbone of this team held to single digit rushing yards. On the whole, the Badgers with just two rushing yards on 24 carries. That's less than 0.1 yards per carry. Wow. Because the ground game proved ineffective, it forced quarterback Graham Mertz to throw more, and outside of the opening drive, that wound up being futile. 17 of 32 throwing with two interceptions, and when it rains, it pours, and in Madison, it might as well have been a deluge. After allowing a touchdown to open the second half, an embarrassing special teams display gives the Illini the ball right back. Former head coach Brett Bielma a winner in his return to Madison. Time like this? It's going to take everyone, and certainly uh, got leaders on this team that I believe in. They've got a part, but everyone's got to own it, and everyone's a part of this whole deal, and so we all got to be a part of the solution. In case any further proof is needed for just how bad this loss was, before today, the Illini had not won inside Camp Randall Stadium since 2002, roughly the same time that their starting quarterback, Graham Mertz, was a uh, one year old, so <laughs> bad, Matt, in other words, yeah. pretty bad. All right, Jared, much more coming up on Big 12 Sports. Thank you. Now to a live look at Pfizer Forum. Let's talk about this. The Milwaukee Bucks opening their preseason within the hour. They're hosting the Memphis Grizzlies. 
We're going to have highlights for you on our late news. The Bucks' first regular season game, that's coming our way October 20th against the 76ers. Turning to Weather Watch 12, meteorologist Daji Swat is here. Daji, what a perfect fall day. It really is. Everyone should be outside <laughs> yeah. as we continue through this weekend. Look behind me, whole bunch of sunshine here in Milwaukee right now. Temperatures topped off in the upper 60s today. We sit at 62 right now with winds out of the north around 8 miles per hour. Has been a slight breeze out there, but overall a dry and beautiful forecast ahead. So as we talk about the forecast ahead. Here are some of our words. Sunny, mild, and nice. I'll let you know how long all these weather words stick around for our seven day coming up on Weather Watch 12. Daji, thank you. Now to the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. New pictures coming in tonight of those search and rescue efforts underway on Sanibel Island today. Ian leaving behind catastrophic damage in parts of Florida and more damage tonight in the Carolinas. The latest from ABC's Justin Finch. Ian made its fourth landfall in South Carolina, coming ashore as a Category 1 hurricane. We had no storm-related deaths. We had no hospitals damaged. All water systems were and are okay. Uh, most of the electricity uh, has been restored. While South Carolina appears to have escaped the worst of it, Florida was hard hit as Ian tore a path of destruction across parts of the state. There's been a great outpouring of support, community, and I've seen a lot of resilience uh, in this community of people that, um, that want to pick themselves up and, and they want to get their communities back on their feet. Residents are just beginning to assess the damage. FEMA on the ground to help with the recovery. And we have already started the planning efforts for what it's going to take to rebuild these communities um, and recover from this storm, but also recover in a way that makes them more resilient against some of the impacts from these storms in the future. Entire neighborhoods destroyed. Many residents left homeless. Listen, I don't have a house. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to live. Many homes in this mobile home park in Venice suffered significant damage. I've never seen devastation like this before ever. When it hit here, it's 140 miles an hour, and I'm, I'm really amazed that there's that many trailers still alive. Most of the neighbors who live here are from out of town, days away from seeing damage like this up close because of closed airports and ruined roads. President Biden declared major disasters for areas impacted by the storm, freeing up federal resources to help with the recovery. We're just beginning to see the scale of that destruction. It's likely to rank among worst in the nation's history. Justin Finch, ABC News, Venice, Florida. WISN 12 and our parent company, Hearst Television, are making it easy for you to help with recovery efforts. We've posted a link for Red Cross donations on WISN.com and the WISN 12 News app. Milwaukee County tonight scaling back its COVID testing sites. Beginning Monday, the Milwaukee Health Department will only host COVID testing at the Menominee Valley drive through site. That's near 24th and St. Paul. Testing will no longer be available at the Northwest or Southside Health Centers. We are just two days from the start of the Waukesha Parade attack trial, and for the first time we are hearing from the mother of the man accused of driving through the parade, killing six and injuring dozens of others. When I was getting his clothes ready for trial, I felt like I was getting his clothes ready for his funeral. I knew then that I was burying my child. Don Woods is the mother of Daryl Brooks Jr. In a phone conversation Friday night, she told us her son suffers from bipolar disorder. Brooks will represent himself in court, something his mother disagrees with. He has no business representing himself. And have you asked? I don't understand that. Have you asked him to reconsider representing himself? Daryl is in a manic state right now. And I don't know if you know anything about people with bipolar, but when they're in a manic state of bipolar, you cannot reason with them because their mind is not even thinking rationally. Wood says she will not be in the courtroom when the trial begins Monday. That move by Brooks to represent himself is unusual but not unprecedented, and tonight it's leaving open many questions about how the trial will look. How does this shape how the trial will look in the coming weeks? Oh, it'll look completely differently than if counsel were proceeding on behalf of Mr. Brooks. Because on one side, the, the defense team has left. And so Mr. Brooks will be alone at counsel table. And 
in a really unpredictable setting. In other words, will he understand what's going on? Will he be able to control himself? How will he conduct himself in the courtroom? Our legal experts will be with us throughout the entire trial, and that begins tomorrow morning at 9 on Upfront. The legal and political followed right here in WISN 12. And once jury selection is finished, we'll stream the entire trial live on their 12 News app and the 12 News Facebook page. Just more than six weeks until Election Day tonight, Wisconsin's race for governor, the most expensive race in the country. And you've probably noticed the group Ad Impact, which tracks TV ad buys, says so far some $55 million has been spent on Wisconsin's governor's race alone between Democrat Governor Tony Evers and his Republican challenger Tim Michaels. To date, the group says Democrats are outspending Republicans by a two to one margin. Election Day is November 8th. We are now halfway through Hispanic Heritage Month. Tonight, a special gathering in Milwaukee. How local schools are working together to celebrate the culture of more than a dozen countries. And but what a better way to ring in October. We're taking you to a local Oktoberfest celebration, Daji. And it's a sunny start to October. I'll let you know how long the sunshine sticks around. That's ahead on Weather Watch 12. Local news from WISN 12, exclusive originals and more. Download the Very Local app and stream for free on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Tonight, the Milwaukee family is looking for answers after a loved one's death. Milwaukee police say a woman was found dead near Palmer and Keefe Sunday. The medical examiner calls the death a homicide. Family members tonight telling 12 News the victim is 20-year-old Kanaya Brunson. This afternoon, they gathered to release balloons in her honor. Even if you haven't met, you didn't know Kanaya, when you met Kanaya, you fell in love with Kanaya. She's going to make you smile. She's going to crack a joke. <laughs> you just want to know who she is. You just a, a bright aura around her, a bright light. Tonight, police are not releasing any further information regarding Brunson's death. As we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, Milwaukee Public Schools joining in on the celebration. 12 News' is Gabriela Garza reporting on the first district-wide event. Today inside the South Division High School Gymnasium, Milwaukee Public Schools invited students, staff, and the community on a world tour to celebrate Hispanic heritage. From music, dance, and art, the first Hispanic heritage celebration district-wide for Milwaukee Public Schools kicked off. Schools within the district adopted a Spanish-speaking country to present and offer history for the community. We wanted to celebrate everyone in our district, not just one or another, everyone. Centering on the rich cultural diversity. We have a very diverse school district and it's important for them to feel that first of all that we are honoring you know their, their roots that we're not only doing that but celebrating. These 13 countries representing the staff as well as the families and students enrolled in their schools. An opportunity for the entire community to unite. To be able to you know learn and expand their their base of knowledge and ultimately lead to better more understanding standing, you know, as a city that, you know, in unity, there's definitely more strength. In Milwaukee, Gabriela Garza, WISN 12 News. To check out more of our Hispanic Heritage Month coverage, you can head right now to the 12 News mobile app and click on the Project Community tab. <laughs> It is the first day of October and time for Oktoberfest in Cedarburg. Plenty of music, food and beer, of course. Oktoberfest running until 8 o'clock tonight and again tomorrow from 10 until 5. Daji is here. What a beautiful day for everyone to get outside. It really is. Yeah. I want to go to Oktoberfest. Do a little dancing, a yes, little food, a little beer. Yeah. All of it. Got to have the dance moves. Yes. <laughs> Here's a look at a recap from September. Uh, we started off pretty warm for the month of September. We had a lot of 80 degree days, which was nice. And then as we closed out the month, those days start to cool down below average. Our warmest day in September was 89 degrees. That was the first of the month. 
as we saw throughout the month, we got a lot of rain in a short period of time. We broke a record, a single day record that was on September 11th, and we saw almost five inches of rain. So it was a pretty jam-packed September there. Now we're transitioning into October with quiet conditions. The sun setting here in Racine, beautiful out there, has a bit of an autumn glow, right? Temperatures in the, the low 60s at the moment and noticing a light breeze. Across the region, many of us are still in the low 60s, including Milwaukee. Right now, 59 in West Bend, 63 in Wheatland and Lake Geneva. A tad bit warmer out to Janesville with a temp temperature at 70 degrees. Now, over the next 12 hours, we are going to cool down into the 50s. Winds are not going to be super gusty, and it's going to be a quiet night. Not a lot of cloud cover here. If you're well inland, a chance for some patchy fog, but many of us will remain on the clear side and don't really have to worry about any reduced visibility. 6 a.m., 8 a.m., also looking fantastic. So if you're an early riser, you'll just need that jacket on as you kick off your Sunday. Here's a look at our apple picking forecast. Partly sunny and looking at cool conditions here. Temperatures, once again, in the morning hours in the 50s will continue to warm into the 60s as we head throughout the afternoon and evening. But overall, another great day. We can anticipate some decreasing cloud cover as we hit closer to about 1 p.m. Over the next four days, get outdoors. We are going to start to notice some changes here a bit closer to Wednesday, and that's because a cold front will be on the move. That's going to increase our chances at cloud cover, and we'll see that transition from mild to cool. So enjoy your patio weather that we have here for our uh, October. Check this out. 63 for tomorrow, 65 Monday, Tuesday, nearing 70 degrees. And then we'll continue to see those temperatures warm back up into uh, rather cool back down, excuse me, into the low 60s as we head after Wednesday. Once again, behind a front as we head into next weekend, the potential for temperatures to remain on the cool side will be back to below average, but right now it does come with some sunshine. So not a lot of rain in the forecast, at least for the days that matter Sunday. So tomorrow absolutely you can still get outside. Beautiful evening, maybe a little fire yeah. tomorrow. Open up the windows. We got to hang on to this weekend, right? We Probably really not do. have too many more of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tashi, thank you. Another brutal Saturday for the Badgers. We're going to hear from UW's QB on the loss coming up. Plus, five games to go when the wild card race is all square. How the Brewers can take control of their playoff picture next in Big 12 Sports. Big 12 Sports, presented by Menards. Last Saturday's clubbing in Columbus was bad, but to some extent, expected. Not much shame in Wisconsin, losing to number three Ohio State in the horseshoe. Uh, getting drubbed by Illinois at Camp Randall to a former head coach who exited in a, uh, let's just say, frowned upon fashion. That's a punch to the gut. Started off decent enough. Game's opening drive, Graham Mertz floats one to Isaac Garendo, who lays out for a whale of a grab, 7-0 Badgers. Mertz forced to the air frequently in this one as the ground game sputters, and it went less than favorably after that. 17 for 32 throwing and two interceptions. Illini up 14-10 at the half and added on to that immediately afterwards. Tommy DeVito transferred from Syracuse, found Pater three times on QB sneaks from the one. Ensuing kickoff just to show how great things were going. Muffed and the Illini recover and put up three more. On the whole, disastrous might be a fitting word. Mertz sacked five times. The ground game cranks out two yards on 24 carries in total. Illinois wins big for the first time at Camp Randall since 2002 when Mertz was one year old. Just flat out got beat. I mean, it was not the response we wanted. And when we were going to hit on that, I mean, that's, that's not what Wisconsin football is. Um, and that's what we got to own as players. Packers elevating cornerback Keandre Thomas from the practice squad this afternoon. Read between the lines, and that means star corner Jair Alexander will likely miss Sunday's showdown with the Pats due to a groin injury. Not the worst one to sit out, though, what with New England down at starting quarterback Mac Jones and leading receiver Jacoby Myers. Looks like a clean bill of health for left tackle David Bakhtiari, though. And Christian Watson could also be good to go, a full participant in Friday's practice after missing the Buccaneers game with a bad hammy. 
I'm just kind of taking it, seeing, seeing how it feels day by day, um, you know, attacking the rehab process and, and doing everything that I can uh, to make sure that my bodies, you know, can feel as good as they can. Uh, obviously, you know, we're here to play football. We're not here to, you know, sit on the sidelines and watch. Uh, so it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's definitely some frustration there. There's, there's a bunch of guys over here who, who kind of, you know, help rally it and, you know, keep that positive mindset. Phillies making up that game differential, finally squeezing in the double dip in D.C. on Saturday. Great news for the crew. The Nats take the first of two, which means once again, Milwaukee and Philly dead even in the wild card race. Although remember, the fight in Phils own the tiebreaker, so the Brewers need to finish the regular season a game in front of them. Game two with the Nats and Phils just underway. Craig Council's fellas on the field in a matter of minutes against the Marlins. And the sprint to the wild card finish line one of the many topics under the microscope in just a few minutes on Big 12 Sports Saturday. Also, just how bad was this afternoon's loss for the Badgers? Is the season cooked? And how hot is Paul Chris seats? We make our predictions for Packers Patriots and the classic Aaron Rodgers versus Brian Hoyer matchup. And he may say otherwise, but is Giannis the real best in the world? Stephanie Sutton and Drew Olson waiting in the wings on standby and ready to roll in just a few minutes. Hey, listen, at least it was a nice afternoon at Camp Randall. Yeah, the they had that going for them, and then that the was weather about it. worked for them at least. Yeah. Tailgating. Yeah. Post Who doesn't love a good tailgate? <laughs> Drowning sorrows. Yeah, they're doing oh, some gaming right now. <laughs> well, you can wipe your tears tonight near the campfire. There you go. <laughs> Those temperatures cooling down into the low 50s near the lake, upper 40s further inland. And then as we head into tomorrow, we're into the 60s with a warming trend at least through our Wednesday before we cool back down into the low 60s and 50s. All right, we're just getting started here. Big 12 Sports Saturday next. Stay with us.